Olin, and salutations to the Truth Corps. I've been uh, talking with some close friends lately, the few close friends that I have, which I designate as 4D friends. I use the term 4D rather than 3D. I won't go into why, but it simply means being present or having been present in the same moment in flesh and blood. So I have some 4D friends, a few, about 20 I would say, and then I have my extended range of friendships, including those of you who listen to me, and others around the world who've been following me for a while. They might be involved in Planetary Tantra, they might have read Not in His Image. And there is a continual saying that comes up in these discussions. There's no better time to be alive. Or, what a time to be alive. There's no better time than now. I strongly hold to that view, and I'd like to take a moment to tell you why. I think it's pertinent to raise this topic right now, because it coordinates with another saying that you may have heard. It has to get worse before it gets better. Well, I don't know how you follow current events. If you watch the mainstream media selectively, if you know that it's all lies and propaganda, but nevertheless you do watch certain news reports, you do monitor the deceit that's unfolding according to the plan which is the end game of the overlords and the archons, the end game, their end game. And if you've looked into it, I think you might agree that nothing could be worse than their end game. But something has been happening quite recently. Of course, you can trace it back to January of 2020. I would say that's the moment when they started to implement their end game with brutal force and endless propaganda. Of course, it's been going on for decades and centuries. But no doubt about it, this is the moment when they escalate their effort to its highest pitch. And so you could as well say, well, this is the worst moment to be alive. But if you do follow the media and if you are selective and you use discernment, you will see that there is also a growing movement and a growing momentum to expose the end game of the authorities and overthrow them. And both of these developments are happening at the same time. You can think of them as two waves or sine waves that overlap each other. So each time now that the overlords come forth with a new blast of propaganda and lies, there is an opposing wave of truth and exposure, and the two waves are now almost coming into sync. So that you could say that every day, if you check in what's on what's happening in the world event, well, there are a number of events that point to us going to the worst moment, and likewise other events that indicate, well, hell no, we're not going to get to the worst moment, they're not going to win their end game. And those who expose the truth and know how, have the will and the know-how to overthrow the authorities, are gaining ground and gaining momentum day by day and indeed hour by hour. Imagine two horses on a racetrack and the horse that has been behind, I'll call it the dark horse of humanity, which is also oddly the white horse of Kalki, well, it's catching up, and the two horses are racing toward the finish line, and at every moment, they are closer to a photo finish, a nose-to-nose -nose finish. So yes, it does get worse every day. The enemies of life and the adversaries of love, truth, freedom, goodness, and all that are doubling down and doubling down again every day, but at the same time, their adversaries are also gaining force, gaining tread. 
But the saying, it has to get worse before it gets better, begs the question, what is the last worse? What is the worst of the worst? Because if the forces for goodness, freedom, and truth prevail, that means that at one moment, the enemies of life will have done their worst. And that will be the final and ultimate of the worst. And after that, everything will markedly, dramatically, and obviously start to get better. And life will start to change according to what I have called in the Gaia Navigation Experiment, the advantage of truth. When the advantage goes to truth, that is the final moment. And then, the last of what the enemies of life can do can be defeated in that moment. And this is the moment in which we're living. Indeed, no better moment than this to be alive. Wouldn't you agree? Now, given that we're on the same page here, let me see if I can just outline for you some of the requirements that I see for the triumph of truth, goodness, and freedom over the evil program of the globalist overlords and technocrats and all of their minions, the misleaders, the politicians, the experts, everyone that they have in their gang, including the dupes on the street who are their enablers and who don't even have to know what the program is that they're enabling, but they are out there doing it anyway. I see some very specific requirements for triumph over this enormous and unprecedented crime against humanity currently being implemented under the pretext of rabbit rabies. Given that we agree that the moment when the worst can happen to this precious world of ours, in this precious world, in the social order, given that we agree that that is the moment of a supreme and unprecedented opportunity, well, let's consider what it takes to meet that opportunity. In the first place, this event is a test of your intelligence. And only those who have the intelligence that is sufficient to the challenge will be able to make the difference for all the others. So there has to be a quantum of intelligence operating across the planet. It doesn't have to be a majority number. It doesn't have to be a huge percentage of the inhabitants of the planet. But this quantum of intelligence has to be there. It is the potent catalyst for victory over the enemies of life. So one thing you can ask yourself each day is, how are you using your intelligence to face what's being thrown at you? For instance, can you tell the difference between medical experts on the media stating lies and other medical experts who are stating the truth? Can you tell the difference between the apparent opposition to the Soviet regime regime, and the controlled opposition. Can you detect what the controlled opposition is? Do you have the intelligence to learn some basic facts about human biology? Do you know what an exosome is? What do you know about the theory of viruses? Do you know about the controversy between Béchamp and Louis Pasteur? Have you used your intelligence to investigate, for instance, how the so-called germ theory of Louis Pasteur came into existence, the conditions under which it was established, and so forth? 
For instance, a book published not too long ago exposes, on first-hand evidence, the journals, laboratory journals of Louis Pasteur. And it, it reveals, this book reveals, in no uncertain terms, in irrefutable terms, that Pasteur fudged the evidence, that he lied, that he even poisoned some of the subjects of his experiment as a way to prove that his theory was correct. Did you know that? Have you applied your intelligence to investigate what is at the basis of so-called germ theory? And of course, there are dozens and even hundreds of other things to investigate, and not everyone can investigate them all. But there is a mass effort going on to expose the lies and deceits around rabbit rabies. And it does take patience, determination, and intelligence to learn about it so that you can be effective in exposing it and resisting it. Resisting that lie, which is the basis of all other lies that are driving the program of the Soviet regime. So that is the first point, the op application of your intelligence, and how exciting is that? If you love to learn, if you have the disposition to learn things, there is so much that can be learned. I saw a short clip the other day of a young American woman, very bright, sparky, typical young American blonde, pretty, probably a housewife, you could say your average person, your average housewife in the United States, by some standards, that's how she appears. And there she is, talking about, accurately and correctly, about the most intimate details of human biology, virology, immunology. And this is something wonderful to behold, that she has this knowledge because she has taken the opportunity to cultivate her intelligence to face the threat coming from the globalist technocrats and the military medical mafia. Now, there's another opportunity, and I consider this to be outstanding. I happen to actually enjoy this opportunity a lot. I gave a talk a while back titled, Your Concept of Humanity Does Not Come From You. And... In that talk, I touched on a subject I consider to be of deep importance. If anyone in the world considers themselves to be spiritual, I don't use that word, then they would have to prove that they are spiritual by expressing their concept of humanity in the correct way. And there are many incorrect concepts of humanity floating around which has come from religious indoctrination all through the ages. So this opportunity specifically places you at a crossroads where you have the choice to look at humanity at a fork in the road. And you have the choice to take one fork, which would be the right fork, and go with the humanity to survive and thrive in the beauty to come. Or you can take the other fork, the left fork, and in that fork, you go on a dead course or a course of dead reckoning into zombification and annihilation. And it's more and more clear every day that people are making this choice. And there are impressive numbers of tads around the planet who are choosing to take the left fork and become zombies. So, this is a great moment to choose the kind of humanity that you want to be and belong to. You know, the masterminds of the Great Reset have declared openly that they will change what it means to be human. Of course, that's what they intend to do, and if you've used your intelligence to look into their program, you know how they intend to do it, basically by tracking and tracing and 
making a hybrid between human animals and AI through using various devices. And uh, in that way, they create humanity in their image as the technocratic overlords. But what is your image of humanity that allows you to stand against that and resist and defeat that program of transhumanism? Great challenge, great opportunity. Really, really exciting. And of course, I've talked a lot about this in the context of Gnostic teachings because it is a fact that the narrative of the Aeon Sophia, the earth goddess, contains in its plot the notion of a correction. And the notion of a correction means a correction of the sense of humanity to go into the future in the true, optimal, and divine endowment of our species or not. So the correction of the Aeon Sophia does bring humanity to a crossroads, a fork in the road rather, where a large part of humanity is bound to die off. To use the Gnostic jargon again, I speak of A10 and A11, A standing for anthropos, which is the Greek word for humanity. So A10 is that part of the human population that will be shed by the process of apoptosis, like the shedding of dead cells. And this does not merely happen as an act of nature, although it is a very great act of the planetary animal mother to shed dead cells, dead human cells, but it's voluntary, it's elective. The, those who are going down in apoptosis for the most part, choose that path. And those who are going into A11, which is the next epigenetic mutation of the human species, affecting all races, choose the other path. You are facing that choice every day. And how exciting is that, especially when you know exactly what you are facing. Now again, if we're on the same page here, I assume you would agree with me that the technocratic program of the Great Reset and everything it involves is inhumane. So when you see a promotional video for the World Economic Forum telling you how they want you to live in the future, implying that you must live in the way that they tell you, When you see those promotional videos, they're slick, they're high production, propaganda videos really, then you you realize this is totally inhumane. Years ago when I was writing writing Metahistory, I wrote a long piece called Insane and Inhumane. So the program of the Great Reset is insane and inhumane. The implementation of phony measures to save the world from rabbit rabies is insane and inhumane. So you are facing inhumanity, inhumaneness every day. And I want to point out that although it is certain from the evidence that is now available that the source of this inhumane and insane program can be located in that criminal cabal of psychopaths, they are the controllers, the rulers, the authorities, which is translation of the word archon. But there is, at the same time, a massive trickle-down effect in the pyramid of power through which they operate. So I can point to Klaus Schwab, it's an easy shot, and say, he is insane and inhumane, then track down to the bottom of the pyramid, track down to the lowest level, the ground level, and anyone in any position in the world who is enabling his program is equally insane and inhumane. And now I ask you, what position do you take when you encounter 
in real and existential circumstances, someone acting inhumanely. Well, I can tell you what my stance is. Zero tolerance. I have zero tolerance for any inhumane behavior from anyone, anywhere in that pyramid. So I don't know what your position is, but if it's anything like mine, then you take a stance, an existential stance in the world, where you do not tolerate any inhumane behavior. Anyone who steps in front of you and tries to impede your freedom or who bullies and threatens you, anyone at all, absolute zero tolerance, there's nothing to be negotiated, there's no compromise, and as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't waste my time trying to convince someone who is exhibiting inhumane behavior that they are doing so. As the advantage goes to truth, it may become less and less necessary to do that. All you have to do is stand for the truth in your own reality and take it from there. These considerations, by the way, raise another topic which is complementary to the challenge of facing insane and inhumane behavior. That topic is your compassion and how you express it. So I ask you point blank, do you feel compassion for any of those tads, any of those specimens in the masses who have elected to be zombies and brainwashed morons. You might extend compassion to them. You might want to look closely at what you do with your compassion. I said recently that I consider compassion to be a precious currency that I hold, and I spend it very, very carefully. And I do not waste it on anyone. So there is a view you can take. You may not take this. It may not be your view yet, but it may be coming. And that view is, well, to hell with them. Anyone who's going down in apoptosis, especially if they elect to do so, they elect to participate in it, gets what they're asking for. They get what they're willing to accept. They get what their compliance brings them. And good riddance to them. They cannot survive in the beauty to come. Two more factors or requirements of facing this opportunity. The first is, this is the greatest chance that human beings around the world of all races could come together in the unity of truth. The opportunity for unity has never been greater at any time in human history. And I'm talking about planet-wide unity. But again, you need to apply your intelligence. You need to be discerning. And you need to look at those things that can unite us, can unite those who want to oppose and overthrow the Soviet regime, and those other matters which are differences between us which are really irrelevant. So what are the key points of the truth we reach in unity and the extraneous or unnecessary points of agreement that can be discarded? It's a great exercise to look at that. And I work a lot, I concentrate a lot on bringing your attention to truth in unity. For instance, the premise of Planetary Tantra is that we are characters in the living dream of the Earth, the Aeon Sophia. And so she is source and she is unity. Recognition of her being the source 
is unity. And that is a unity that transcends and trumps all religions and all spiritual systems. Finally, let's get to the tough part. Let's look at the hard part. Those who discern what is happening today with the enforcement of the Soviet regime and the measures to save the world and save all lives from the bunny bug can see clearly that a great deal of the assault against humanity comes in the form of threats. We are facing psychological warfare and mind control, and one of the tools of mind control, the primary tool, is fear. So the media broadcast fear every day. Fear and threats, threats and fear over and over again. But there is something that any sane person will tell you about threats. A threat is just a threat, like when you face a bully. A bully is threatening you. But no threat really matters unless it can be backed up with force. So when we look at what's happening in the world today, yeah, threats coming at you all the time. And where is the means to enforce those threats? Well, let's face it. Realistically, the globalist overlords and all of their minions down to the dupe on the street who steps in front of you when you want to go into a supermarket and buy something, they are acting as if they are prepared to enforce their threats. Correct? And in some cases, they do. And as a matter of fact, the way that the overlords manage the media, the mainstream media, and to a certain extent even the alternative media, is by showing you constantly videos and examples of cases where force is applied behind the threat. And granted, again, you have to apply your discernment. Are some of those videos you see real? Or are some of them staged? Well, let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, you're really seeing horrific situations, horrific scenes, where legions of men and women dressed in SWAT gear, in riot gear, are violently enforcing threats upon the population. And you also see individual instances, videos that people have taken with their cell phones and so forth. So it is a fact that you cannot deny that there is some enforcement coming behind these threats. For instance, there is increasing reports of military enforcement of measures against rabbit rapies. So the threats are escalating. And certainly, to some degree and in some situations, the authorities are enforcing these threats. And it's possible, it's conceivable, that in some circumstance and some situation in real time, you or I could be confronted brutally and frontally with that enforcement. Now I ask you this question. If it is clear in the picture of what is happening, the big picture on the planet, that the authorities intend to enforce their regime with brutal force, with violence, and if it is clear that their entire program is based on deceit, then wouldn't you agree that you are living in a world where a massive deceit is being enforced by brutal means? Agreed? But what about the other side? What about truth? If a lie 
can be enforced by brutal means, can truth be enforced equally so by brutal means? Will it come to the point when that must happen and you, yourself, individually, may be involved in such a situation? If you find yourself in that situation, or even if you don't, not yet, it certainly is advisable to ask the question, where is the power to enforce the truth that can meet, match, and overcome the power to enforce the deceit? So I'll leave you with that question, but I will point out a gut sense I have, a gut feeling. What we've seen lately, just in the past couple of weeks, is what appears to be a great triumph to the advantage of truth. Namely, the news is going around everywhere and even getting out on the mainstream media that it has been proven that the authorities themselves cannot give proof of the actual existence of the bunny bug. And there was a case in Ontario, Canada, and cases are showing up everywhere, some of them relating to freedom of information requests. You probably know these stories. This seems to be a tremendously positive and hopeful breakthrough for the truth core whoever and wherever they may be on the planet, right? Well, certainly, I embrace that possibility, but I embrace it with great caution. Now, I'm going to say something that might appear like a warning, and a warning can carry an element of fear. But I don't wish to communicate anything to you that is contaminated with fear. So the warning, in quotes, that I'm now going to state, is simply the expression of a gut feeling that I have based on what I know about how the authorities operate. I would say that they most certainly intend to implement a massive show of brutal force imminently through the next six months. And one of the factors that convinces me that they will do this, two factors really, one, they're at, their in, they're at the end of their game and they have no al- other alternative but to show that hand, to play that hand of total, brutal oppression. But on the other hand, the other factor is that they operate through demoralization. So wouldn't it be typically in their MO, their modus operandi, to let a wave of hope, I hate that word, but to allow a wave of actual positive opposition build. Therefore, they would allow confidence to grow in the possibility of overthrowing them. And when that confidence grows to a certain point, they would, according to their well-known and much-repeated MO, do something brutal to shatter that confidence and therefore produce an ultimate demoralization in the opposition. I have a gut sense that is exactly what they are planning to do. So I'm not warning you about it to induce fear in you. I'm warning you to induce readiness and strength and stamina to face that event when it happens. Enough said, and I'll be seeing you for sure in the beauty to come.